Okay, so we're going to start with our last basic skill, okay, in most of these problems. We have identified strong acids, strong bases, and everything else, of course, being weak. We've talked about their Ka's and Kb's, but we have to link Ka and Kb a little bit. So let's start with ammonia. And this is a little derivation of your last little skill. And NH3 in water. Okay. Uh, NH3 is typically a base because of that lone pair. It can accept an H, and this is called a Brownston Lowry, we call uh, base because it accepts a proton. This is a donating a proton, so this is a Bronston Lowry acid. In any case, what happens to a Bronston Lowry base, it becomes a Bronston Lowry acid, which we call a conjugate acid, right? The word conjugate means same. So if you remember, same chemical plus or minus an H plus, that is called a conjugate acid base pair. All right. Now, Water was the acid, and then after it donates the proton, it has one less proton, so now it's OH minus, and that is called the conjugate base. So you can see the conjugate acid base pairs here. Conjugate acid base pairs. Same chemical, plus or minus H. The conjugate acid of this base would be something that has one more proton over here. The conjugate um, base of this acid would be the scenario of the same chemical with one less. Okay? So, any case, that's one reaction. Okay? Now, this reaction will have an associated Kb. Okay? We can measure how well this reaction goes forward. And that Kb would be NH, I'm sorry, NH4+, plus, which is an ion, it's aqueous. Okay? times OH minus, another ion that's aqueous, over the uh, reactants, products over reactants, so we'd put NH3 here. We would not put water because water is a liquid. It doesn't have a concentration. This would be aqueous. These, of course, are ions, so you can always assume they're aqueous. Okay, and there is my KB. Okay, and I can evaluate its Kb. This is not a strong base, by the way. It's not a hydroxide with a group 1 or group 2 ion, so it's a weak base, but it has a Kb nonetheless. Now, let's do the uh, acid part of this reaction. If I take the ammonia, NH4+, and make it react with water, okay, now we're going to have the conjugate acid, right? and it's going to donate its proton to the water, who's a liquid, and it's going to act as a base in this case. So you can look at water, in this case, donating an acid, be acting a, a proton acting as an acid, and here water is accepting a proton acting as a base. We call these compounds that can accept acid or bases amphoteric. Okay, we'll talk more about them. any case, the product here is that we have, uh, we, we reform NH3 again, right? Because it's the acid, it gives off a proton, now it becomes the conjugate base. And of course, now, all right, the water gained the proton and makes the hydronium ion, which is essentially the same as the proton. So what's the Kb? Uh, Ka. The Ka that's associated with this acid reaction Okay, it's an equal, remember these K's are just equilibrium constants. We put A and B to talk about the type of reaction. This is an acid reaction going forward. This is a base reaction going forward. Okay, now, so it would go products, so you go ammonia over, uh, times the hydronium ion, same thing as the proton, over the NH4+. Plus. There we go. Uh, I should put that plus inside here. You get the point. Now, interesting enough, okay, let me get rid of some stuff here. If I was to combine these reactions, all I'm doing is showing you how the same acid and the same conjugate, uh, and the same acid or conjugate base pair, there's different reactions with water, okay? Some people say, well, why doesn't the NH4 react with the hydroxide and go in the reverse? Why did I write the second reaction with water? And the answer to that is there's a heck of a lot more water in an aqueous solution as hydroxide, so the predominant reaction in reverse would be this one with water.
right? It's an aqueous solution. Okay, I notice some hydroxides are being made, but they're really forward reaction for the acid, the, the, the species that it's in, since it's an aqueous, it's in greatest quantities, is the water. So that's why we write that for the second. So I'm writing two reactions, one the uh, acting as a base and one acting as an acid in aqueous. And we're seeing how Ka's and Kb's for the same chemical relate to each other. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cancel. All right. And I'm going to use a nice color, I bet red. So notice ammonia's cancel overall. Okay, the ammonium ion cancels. And what am I left with? I'm left with two waters, okay, breaking apart, one gaining an electron, becoming the hydronium, and one losing hydroxide. This look familiar from last night? Yeah, this is the auto-ionization of water. Okay, so look at that. The KBs cancel, and the KAs, these reactions cancel to get basically how water breaks apart. Now, if you don't see the aha yet, what if I was to take this KB and multiply it by this KA? Okay, well, same thing happens. Ammonia's cancel. I'm uh, sorry, ammonium ions cancel. Okay, if I was to multiply these two K, KA times KB, ammonia cancels. And wow, if you look at this, this all of this would simplify to a hydroxide concentration times a what? A hydronium ion concentration. Wow, and what do you think that equals? What does those two equal? You guessed it, Kw, which we all know at a certain temperature because it's temperature dependent, 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Okay, wow, so that means that really Ka, or Kb in this case, this one, times K a, uh, a equals KW, and that is our last important skill, because if I have a KA, I'm going to need at some point a KB for the base reaction, or likewise, if I have a KB, I need a what? A KA to answer the question, so this is a link. Now, because these are KAs, I could do something else, negative log of both of these. This is called a PKB and I do the negative log of Ka, that'd be the pKa. And because these are now logs, if I do the negative log of these, I would add the exponents, and you guessed it, when I add them, I get the what? pKw, right? So let's pretend these are nice even numbers, and the pK, uh, the Kb is 1 times 10 to the negative 5. Negative log of that would be, of course, 5. And this is 1 times 10 to the, well, you notice they better equal to 1 times 10 to the what? Negative 14. Well, why better? Because when you do Ks and Kbs of the same chemical, don't we just get this relationship? The multiplication of these guys have to equal that. So what number plus a negative 5 is negative 14? Okay, you've got it, negative 9. So that's how all that works, okay? So, of course, that becomes a 9, and 9 plus 5 is, of course, equal to 14. So the pKw is always equal to 14. Okay, and we'll use pKa's and pKb's for something else a little later in this unit, but that's the last piece of information. So if I have a Ka that's very high, like a strong acid, well, that means its Kb is very small or non-existent. If I've got a weak acid and the Ka is, you know, moderately high, the Kb is also somewhat high, and you have an acid that kind of goes back and forth, and that's most acids are weak and have similar Ka's and Kb's because they can go back and forth. Let's go back to that table I showed you yesterday. Okay, so here is the relative strength of acids table. You're not going to have this. It's not in your reference table, but we use it to learn. Here are the Ka's, and you already know this. We talked about this yesterday, but now we have an, a mathematical understanding. As the acids get weaker, their Ka's get smaller. What happens to the Kb's of the conjugate bases who are trying to go in the reverse? Now, I know that they would go in the reverse probably with the water, not with the proton, because the water is in higher quantities, okay? But nonetheless, the Kb 
would be getting bigger. As the Ka decreases, the Kb has to increase. Notice who's on the bottom. Look at this. OH minus. Okay, that's, that's, look at the Ka of water. Interesting enough, it's 1 times 10, negative 14. That's the K what? That's the Kw. Okay, and look at these guys. These guys are such low Ka's, their Kb's are through the roof. Look at O negative 2. Okay, that's really, really basic. And, 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 and NH, NH2 has that lone pair and a negative charge that really love to track the H's. So these guys are strong bases, even though we don't write them in typically, but these are very strong. That means the Ka's are very small. Okay, so that puts some um, numeric numbers to our, our, our concept. Okay, Ka and the Kb's have to be, as we would say, an inverse relationship for all of this to work. Okay, so now that we're ready to rock and roll here, we're starting out here evaluating acid and bases, and this is acid and base 2. We have a silly student paired a 0.1 molar solution of formic acid, and we want to measure the pH of the solution, or we want to know the pH of the solution is 2.38. We want the Ka for this acid, so uh, this is not a strong acid. It's not one of the top 7s we talked about. Now, by giving me the pH is equal to 2.38, which is, you know, a log, it's really 10 to the what? It's 10 to the negative 2.38 base 10. You'll find that number. So negative 10 to the x, okay, uh, we find that to be 4.16 times 10 to the negative 3, and that is, of course, our proton concentration. That's significant. Now, why? Well, this is a weak acid, so let's go write the reaction. H, uh, CHO2, okay, is going to dissociate into a proton and its conjugate base, CHO2, and it's negative. Okay, they're saying we started with 0.1 molar. We cannot assume it all dissociates, because if it was a strong acid, I know the pH would be 1 right away. But I have to find how much comes off. My friends in chemistry, we just found that, okay, by the pH. But we, our ice table, all right, initial uh, change and at equilibrium. So this is 0 and 0. The question is how much comes off. Well, we measured the pH after we dropped it in and it reached equilibrium. You have to make those assumptions. And by measuring the pH... I know that at equilibrium, the H plus is already 4.16 times 10 to the negative 3. And guess what? If you think about this, this is 0.1 minus some x. This is going to be plus x. This is plus x. Well, my friends in chemistry, what is that x? That x is exactly the H plus concentration that we got from the pH. So the pH gave us the value of the X. That's how these questions will work sometimes. And of course, because they're both X, okay, it's a one-to-one -one stoichiometric relationship. 4.16 times 10 to the negative 3, oops, all right, is the same number. Okay, and of course, um, this should be, I shouldn't write that, I should just write minus x, right? Okay, so this is minus x, and this equilibrium is 0.1 minus x. So let's plug that into our equilibrium table. Okay, Ka is going to equal to our what? Products, proton, time the conjugate base, CHO2 negative, over H. CHO2. Well, my friends, let's put the values in. Okay. H plus is going to be, well, this is going to be this times this squared, right? So 4.16 times 10 to the negative 3 squared. All right. Over. Oh, Christmas. We want to find an unknown. We have an unknown. Well, we can make our life very simple. Do you think that this X this small little number, which we already know, how do you think this number is significant compared to this point 0.1? And you're right, it's not. Because of the what? Ka's being small for weak acids, just like for KSP's, 
the amount of subtraction from this initial is insignificant. So we can approximate this away and say that this is not going to change the value of this significantly enough to change my answer. So we can put 0.1 right on the bottom. We're going to approximate. Now if you remember, you approximate when you're in within 5% of what you're subtracting. So you could do 0.416 times 10 negative 3, which by the way is very simply 0 0.00416, and divide by 0.1, and you'll see if that number times 100, if that number is less than 5%, you can do that approximation. Well, here's a big hint. You can always do the approximation you don't have time not to. So obviously this is going to be less than 5%. Okay, and we're actually, uh, actually it's 4.17% as we'll see in a second. But in any case, that we're going to solve for. So this squared divided by 0.1, I get a Ka equal to, uh, I believe 1.7 times 10 to the negative 4. No units in an equilibrium constant, and that's what, of course, what goes up here. So 1.7 times 10 to the negative 4. All right, now, very classic problem, both of them. And here they're saying, what's the percentage of the acid ionized in a 0.1? Well, I kind of did the work for you in checking my approximation, but we're starting with 0.10 molar, and we're saying that much comes off. So yeah, so 4.16 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, I didn't really think about it. I was the second question while I was talking about it. Any case, times that by 100, I know we basically talked about this for the approximation, but to find the actual percent ionization, we'd do this. And you'd find this number to be 4.17%. Wow, this is a weak acid. Weak acids barely dissociate. And it also shows us that we're within that 5% allowability. Once this number is a bigger than 5%, you're really not supposed to approximate. You have to solve for that. But you won't see any problems. Okay, so that's how that works. All right, moving on. Now we have some acid and base reactions. Now, this acid, these both have an H to give away. The question is, who is going to act as the acid? Who is going to act as the base? Well, you're going to have to go to some table to read the Ka's for each of these. The one with the higher Ka, okay, is the one who's going to act as the acid. So HSO3 negative and H2PO4, let's go to table and see who's has a higher. Back at my Ka table, this is the only way you could do it because they're both weak acids. HSO3 negative, okay, has a Ka of 1.1 times 10 negative 7, and H2PO4 negative has a Ka of 6.2 times 10 negative 8. Clearly, the higher Ka is HSO3, so this one's going to act as an acid. If you notice, they both can accept protons because they have a negative charge. So these guys are both amphoteric. HSO, HSO3 negative uh, would be somewhere on the other side of this table. Remember we did this last year. And HPO4 can also gain a proton or accept the pro give off a proton or accept. In this case, because it has a lower Ka than H, it's going to act as the base in this example. But both of these could act as acid and bases. And if, in fact, if you look up and down this table, look at HPO4 negative 2 is acting as an acid. But look, it's listed this way. So it's got a, a Kb, and HSO3 negative also is listed on this table somewhere. Okay, HSO3 negative, there it is, up here. Okay, notice its conjugate base is going to be a little, a little low in this case. Okay, but in any case, um, HSO3 is my acid. Let's go back to, okay, so this is going to be my conjugate acid because of the higher Ka. And this is going to be my base. I didn't say conjugate base because if this is the acid, it donates the proton. So now it's SO3, negative 2, right? It lost one more. And the base loses its positive, H3PO4. Notice the charge is conserved on this side, negative 2 overall, negative 2. And you should be able to figure out who the acid-base pairs are, okay? And that you should do when you're going to check the key. Now, Number eight is what was left out for yesterday. I want the Kb for the acid in the forward direction. So the acid we said was HSO3 and negative. Of course, we need its Ka because I want the Kb. So we'd look at our table, and we know from my derivation that what? Ka times Kb 
equals kw or the pka negative log of a plus their logs now pkb equal pkw okay i want you to solve for that as well remember we covered this in my lecture today all right moving to the back side uh, number nine is kind of like the first worksheet. What's the hydroxide ion concentration? Okay, what's the pH? Very, that's basic skill number one. Oh, what's the pOH of a solution? Now, this is, this is equilibrium time because this is a weak acid. Weak. So we're going to have to do an equilibrium, okay, problem like we did for the first question. All right, and I'm not going to outline that for you. You try that, look at the key. Notice they want the pOH, so once you solve for the hydroxide, well, once you solve for the H+, plus, you can do what? Convert that to the hydroxide, and of course the pOH is the negative log. Okay, number 11, we have to evaluate this to be a strong base or strong acid. Well, it's a group 1 or a group 2 ion with a hydroxide, so it's a strong base. Oops, so therefore, I would not need okay I would not need a uh, equilibrium to see how much of the X disappears I can use the pH I'm sorry I can use this concentration as the concentration of something to get my pH or my pOH and work backwards so number 10 11 should be done as well alright so look at those okay we're evaluating strong acid strong base and I want you to do also acid and base 3, look at the key as well, okay? See you tomorrow.